as I say, we have come uh, together to honor the Lord Jesus, to receive from him, to hear what he has to say to us as his children, and then to receive from him direction. And hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you, are you sleeping? Amen. Get to your neighbor. Wake up. <laughs> Let the sleeping anointing in your room. <laughs> Pastor Matthias, don't sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Last uh, Sunday from the road, we have been talking, I believe, about four Sundays ago, about the power of transformation. Hallelujah. And I believe, as I said myself, I was blessed with the word because as you, I am receiving from the Lord. None of us is called adult of God. None of us is called youth of God. We are all called children of God. Hallelujah. So we keep on learning from him. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So today we're going to step into the second part of power to operate and to function amen you want to operate and you want to function who remember the message last sunday what do we say yes can we have a microphone for him please so people who are watching can also hear what you're saying go ahead last sunday we talked about the power to operate mm -hmm. and to function mm -hmm. And we said that um, those uh, two things are, they might seem similar, but they are different. Mm -hmm. In a way that you can be, um, you can have the power of God in you, you can have the Holy Spirit in you, but you might not be operating in what God has called you to operate into. Mm -hmm. And you might have the Spirit of God in you with all the fruits of the Spirit, but you might not function mm -hmm. the way God wants you to function. Mm. For you to do so, you mm -hmm. need a power mm -hmm. that he told the, the his uh, disciples mm -hmm. wait in the upper room mm -hmm. to receive that power to operate and function mm -hmm. as he wanted them to function. And we took the example of Peter mm -hmm. that before that power, mm -hmm. Peter was afraid mm -hmm. of the Pharisees, mm -hmm. even though he had the spirit of God mm -hmm. and he was able to cast out demons mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. and do miracles. Mm -hmm. He still had lacked that power to mm -hmm. operate and function mm -hmm. as he should have been mm -hmm. in the in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. and that we need then that power that is the power that john the baptist said that he who comes after me mm -hmm. will baptize you not only with the spirit mm -hmm. but also with fire, fire. Ale. <laughs> somebody is asking whether he was the one who preached it <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hand together for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is the message. Power to operate and to function. How do we say that in French? D'accord. La puissance... D'opération, la puissance d'opération pour opérer et agir, pour fonctionner. You see, when it comes to the kingdom of God, there are layers and level. That's why there are archangels and angels. Even in the heavenly, there are levels. So it would be a mistake for us on earth to think that uh, we are at all level. <laughs> we only graduate to level. You have the seraphims. You have the cherubims. Each one of them don't operate the same. The cherubims and the seraphims, they don't appear to talk with women as if men and children they operate in the heavenly as host. 
The angels are the one that are sent to men to carry the message. The archangels, according to the word of God in the book of Daniel, they are there to fight the principalities on your behalf. They are back. They back you up. They back your spiritual warfare. So when you say, Bombardé! <laughs> You can see the heaven and your prayer that rise and bombard heaven. And the archangels are there to take down the principalities. Hallelujah. So power to operate and to function in the kingdom so that you become efficient. Somebody say efficient. You see, efficient is in quality. Efficient is in quality. Quantity is also something you may have, but quality must come before quantity. We see that many people did follow the Lord Jesus, but not many were in the quality. Many of them follow him for their belly. The Bible said they were hungry. <laughs> Hallelujah. So for you and I working and walking in the kingdom of God, we ought to understand the principle of operation and functionality. Without the power of the Holy Ghost to operate, you can be a godly Christian and then yet a weak one. You see, we talk about prophet Eli. He was a good man, a godly man. In the book of uh, 1 Samuel. Prophet Eli was a good man. A godly man. But he was weak. He could not function in the operating room in which he was appointed. And yet he was leading the affairs of God. However, King Saul, he was godly. Humble, he was able to operate as a king, but he failed to function within his perimeter. He thought that in his functionality, he also had a priesthood as a sacrificator. Uh, I would say that, sacrificator, as a priesthood. He was operating into the office of king, but not with the functionality of a priesthood. That, does it make sense? So when God calls you, he gives you a office to operate in. And in that office, he assigned functionalities for you to be able to be efficient. So the power of God that he's speaking of. The Bible tells, we read last time, we're going to read again. Pull for me Luke chapter 4. We're going to read that first before we continue. Luke chapter 4. Verse 14 and 15. So we're going to, the, the microphones, can we have a bike? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So look chapter 4, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Go ahead on the screen, please. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of... And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Uh -huh. And there went out a fame of him through all the region around, throughout all the region round about. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, continue. And he... Thought. Can we have we have some go ahead, please give us the, the word. Mm -hmm. Go ahead on the screen. And he taught in their synagogues. And he taught in the synagogues. Mm -hmm. Being glorified of all. So Jesus returned in the power of what? Of the spirit. He did not simply return in the spirit. He returned in the power of the spirit. And I remember, this was at the time that he was being led into where? 
the wilderness to be what? Of the... Now, who led him? The spirit. Why? Because you see, you, when we pray, the, he, he gave us the prayer, the, the, um, uh, the, the Lord's prayer, in which it says, do not lead us into temptation. Often some people have uh, difficulty with that, understanding it. But what it means is that what God does, he will present you at the table and let you in the hands of the enemy to sift you. For why? To remove out of you the mundane. The Bible says that Peter was asked of the devil. And what did the Lord Jesus say? No, no, no. He said permission has been granted. So the devil comes and says that Peter has the anointing but he's not operating in the power and he's not functioning correctly. So he comes and knock at the door of the Lord. He said, talk, talk, talk. Can I have permission to see that boy? And at the wonder of Peter, the Lord Jesus says, permission has been granted. Normally, when you have somebody you love and then an, uh, an enemy comes to take him, you will not say, go ahead. You feel what I'm saying? The ways of the Lord are bizarre. <laughs> you will not tell to the one who comes against your loved one, go ahead, do as you will. In the book of Job, we saw that uh, the devil was uh, running to and fro. And then came in the day where the sons of God were assembled. And the Lord asked him, hey, where are you coming from? He said, I I've been looking for your children around to see which one I will get. <laughs> because the devil is not after the lost. The Lord, the, the, the devil is not after the lost. He's after the saved. So when he said, I've been going to and fro, he was looking for somebody he can hit. And the Lord says, have you considered my servant? Sometimes when the Lord, you know, in our we say atalaku. Atalaku, it means your praise. When the Lord makes your praise, <laughs> because the Lord says, have you considered my servant? The devil said, ah, that one. Oh, it's because there are edge of protection around everything he has, even his socks, there is edge of protection on it. That's why he is praising you. Just remove portion of it and you will see. He will let you go. And the Lord says, have you considered my servant? Job had power to operate but he needed functionality in that operation so that he can be fruitful correctly into the ways where God has called him for so Job found himself in a place where he was put to the plate of the devil but you see when you understand the mind of the Lord according to what he reveals amen because we cannot understand the full mind of the Lord but when you understand according to what it reveals, for the word of God says that the, the spirit of God searches the deep things of God and reveal unto us. When you understand how God sees you, then you understand why he sends you to battle. Because you see, you do not send a flicky, flicky, sissy, plicky, plicky to the war. If somebody has to go to war, and that war, <laughs> and that war is a war where you will have to take territory, you don't send the transgender there. Let me say that again. Because by the time he arrives, eh, you hear boom. Eh! <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to send a man. 
when God wanted to send to war against Jericho, he looked, he said, Joshua, be of good courage and strong. Even when Deborah, the prophetess, had to go to war, she went with a spirit of Elijah. She didn't went like, eh, they are over there. Eh, Jesus. <laughs> no. <laughs> are you hear what I'm saying? There is power that gets into you and that makes you do things that the God of heaven provides to you and then the horse of heaven are on your side. So you find yourself becoming a general. And now you take over territory and now you subdue principalities because the word of God and the power of God in you is no respecter of But that power to operate, it comes in a one way, to trial. Through trials. For the Bible says, he was led of the spirit to be tempted of the devil. Point. And then, 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 then. And then the Bible says, and he returned in the power of the spirit. After being tempted. Peter, same thing. Before he received the power at the upper room, he also went through the sifting. Elijah, before he was taken up, he went through the running. <laughs> Are you know what I'm saying? Before the Lord Jesus was glorified, he was crucified. You see, if you want to have muscle like mine, look. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> if you want to have muscle, you have to exercise that muscle. So the more you lift at the exercises, at the gym room, the more power is transferred into your body. And give me verse 14. Verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Now from there, get me now verse 20. 49 of a chapter 24. Same look. Luke 24, verse 49. Yes, go ahead. Luke, Luke 20, chapter 24, 24 verse, 20, verse 20, 49, 49. 49. Yes, go ahead. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry he in the city of Jerusalem. Until he be endued with power from on high. Now, people of God, give me this in the Amplify. This is where most of us have made mistakes. We receive the mandate of the Lord. We are called. We are chosen. We are filled. And we think we are ready. And then we go, you see, some of us, when we were saved, huh, we will take the street. Hallelujah. And after you go, you, you, drink, you drink ice. <laughs> because the power is different from the feeling of the spirit. So the Lord Jesus says, read me, read me for me. Luke 24, 49, uh -huh. Amplified Version. Listen carefully. I am sending the promise of my father. The Holy Spirit upon you. So first is the promise of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But when you receive the Holy Spirit, what do you do? You need to tarry. You see, it says, I'm sending the promise of the Holy Spirit, but what? You are to? But you are to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you... Until. So the until 
tells us that at the time you receive the Holy Ghost, you still haven't received the power to operate. Because the Holy Ghost is a seal of your salvation unto redemption. That makes you cry about Father and to know you are therefore a child of God. But you need more than that. The Holy Ghost comes in and you speak in tongues and you prophesy. But you need more than that. You need more to enter places where you can speak and then things will happen. When you can speak and things will shift. Where you can speak and transformation will happen. Okay. The child of God that is embodied, that is clothed, that is soaked in. The word Terry until you receive is to be soaked in. It's like a, they take you like a, a chiffon <laughs> and they put you into water. And when you come out of the water, you are filled of that water. So, you see, at that point, you no longer have the rivers coming out of your belly, but you become rivers. The Bible says that even the shadow of who? Peter. Think about it. The shadow of Peter, when he passed, the shadow was filled with power. You want to operate in the power of the Lord. There are first principle. You must be tried. To remove all the mundane out of your socks. Now, trial depends on how God sees it. Trial can be losing something, being sick, losing your job. Losing your finances, losing your health, losing your reputation. It's God, hallelujah, who's going to define how he's going to try you. For it says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17, 9 and 11, it says, for I the Lord I try. So you can't think, no, uh, this neighbor has been tried this way, then I will certainly be tried that way. No, God will decide. Ah, he's going to try because he knows what is the thing that is grabbing on you and that is causing you not to become and not to be filled with power. For Peter, the issue was that he was too ego, egocentric. He thought that the spirit of God he had, the revelation he had, was enough to make him a general. By the time he realized, it was a girl who took him down. Hallelujah. The Bible says, she said, hey, you, even your talk, we recognize your talk. You are one of them. He said, alas, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so you need to understand what power is in the kingdom. Power is not for you to become strong. Power is for you to destroy stronghold. It's different. Hallelujah. Power is for you to destroy stronghold. The spirit can give you strength. But the power causes you to destroy stronghold. And you become like a Jeremiah. You can build up and tear down. When you have been embodied with power, your face and your eyes no, are no longer afraid of the faces of people. You are no longer intimidated by what people have. You can sit at the concert among kings and among billionaires. When they talk, you talk. When they say, you command. Because you now understand that you have been sucked into something that does come from above. So you are no longer standing to ask. You see, when you are in the power of the Holy Ghost, you don't ask your salary. <laughs> when you are in the power of the Holy Ghost, you command your increase. Because now, 
the people will no longer misuse you as they will. You will be the one who will tell which direction shall and must the train go. When you have the power of the Holy Ghost, you become like a Joseph. Whatever you at, grace is there. And because of you, increase happens. Change happens. Now you want to function in that power. You want to be efficient. The Bible talks in the book of Hebrew that uh, we have been saved for a long time. That by then we should have been proficient. I do not want to be the everyday Christian. No, I don't want that. Uh -uh, uh -uh. I don't want to be saved and go to heaven only. No, 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 no. Before I depart the earth, the Bible said that the fame of Jesus Christ went ahead of him. Which fame? Which when he entered places, the devil already said, yo, what you doing here? It's not our time. It's not your time. Leave us alone. The devil was begging. If a witch and a wizard run after you in your dream, then you need to reassess. Are you what I'm saying? If Asmode, which is the spirit that calls people to sleep in the dream, runs after you in your dream, then you need to reassess. Because you were not sent to be subdued. Hallelujah. You were sent to subdue and to dominate. The Lord is causing you to understand that after you have received the power of the Holy Ghost, I mean the Spirit, and then you have received the Holy Ghost, and then you have spoken in tongues, and then you have become a prayer man, a prayer woman, you have become a, prophes uh, uh, a prophet, you prophesy, and so he wants you to understand now that you have tarry. It has to be a wind that will come and that will make you hear something that is not usual. Because until then, Peter and all the 120, I mean the 119, until then, they never saw what happened in the upper room. And yet, they have been with Jesus Christ and they have been casting out demons. They have been doing all kinds of works. But yet, in the upper room, they saw something that yet they were to see. So it tells you that when the Lord is choosing you and appoints you to do something, do not believe that you have arrived. The Lord cannot deposit in you power. He can deposit in you understanding. He can deposit in you revelation. But do not believe that you have arrived because you must always remember that there is more that is awaiting you. That's when your desire start now shifting. And your, your desire now start shifting in the place where the Bible says, desire all the best gifts. You see, power in the Holy Ghost attracts also power. But it attracts both power. He attracts holy power and demonic power. Uh-huh. Let me put it this way. If you rise very high and get out of the earth, first and foremost, if you come from here and then you are at the top of the, of the, of the, of the roof, you might already have some dizziness. Now, go all the way to the 35th story. And then go all the way and you get into the sky. At that level, the environment of the sky is the one now guiding you. That's what I'm saying. On this level, you can walk how you want. When you rise and you pass the level of the sky, there, the power over there guides you. And you float. Am I right? In the spirit realm, 
When you rise in power, demons also do come according to the power that is being entrusted in you. I read again. We now will not be afraid. Be rather happy. <laughs> be joyful. Because when the Lord is rising you, and then you see that things in your life are getting tough. You see that things in your life are getting harder. You see that things in your life are, are, are taking a shape that is not as you thought it should take. Then it means you have been given the opportunity to call something to change. If you do not exercise what God has given unto you, what is the good for? If you have no opportunity to exercise the power that the Lord has placed in your hands, what is the good for? Let me give you an example. If, have you, have you ever gone to the movies, theater? Let me give you an example. And you will see how the devil fight. If you go to a movie theater, not even to a movie theater, if you watch a movie that you like, most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, the movie that you watch, you are so captivated inside the movie. I say most of the time because sometimes the movie, movie watch you, okay? <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is this. Most of the time, when it is the things of just random, secular, whatever, You'll be watching a movie where you are captivated, even if it's a Christian movie. You are captivated and then you are awakened. But then, start reading the Bible. And then, you start with uh, 1 Corinthians 11. For the Lord has received of the Lord, and that the Lord has received of the Lord, and that the Lord has received for the Lord. And then you wake up, and the Lord, uh, where was I? <laughs> because the word of God is spirit. So you're rising into level. And there, the powers that be, that give sleep. <laughs> They're rising to meet you. Am I right? And you can be awakened and very, very awakened. And you have rested 12 hours a day. And then the 13th hour, when you get into the word. <laughs> now you have to fight the spiritual realm and the principalities that ingest into you sleep. Not every sleep comes from God. Remember that. Imagine the Lord Jesus. He goes to cast out demons. And when he arrives, but now, now, now it's Jesus. He cannot say in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I'm about to say in the middle of Jesus. He cannot say in the name of Jesus. But anyway, he arrives. You see the demon. The guy, the guy of, uh, the demon of, uh, what was that, Gandhara. The man of Gandhara. Who had a legion. He sees him. He says, what is your name? Power comes out of it. And then they say, we are legion. I said, come out. <laughs> that demon will look at him, look at, look at, look at that. <laughs> because see, if you are, I told you last time, if you are a sniper, the whole army depends on you. Because not everybody is a sniper. Almost everybody is a soldier. Are you what I'm saying? But not everybody is a sniper. So when you have a whole bunch of soldiers on the field, and then they put you as a sniper, it's because your ability is highly different. 
But over there, if you are not watching, if you are not uh, focused, if you are not taking, because at that point you have been given extreme, extreme power to take down the enemy without the enemy seeing you. But at that point, if you do not pay attention, focus, the whole army may be defeated just because of you. Moses was given power. When he stood, the children of Israel was winning against the Amalekite. Hallelujah. When he was weakened, the Amalekite was winning over the children of Israel. You must understand who you are in this kingdom. And you must trust that who God made you to be is more higher than what you think of yourself. So the Lord returned in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit. Based on how much you are ready to open, that's how much the Lord will deposit. If you do not open up, what does it mean to open up? It simply means that to humble yourself under God. And what it means humble yourself under God is to agree that the word of God is authority over you. That's all it means. When the word of God says this is this, when you are wrong, the word of God says you're wrong. When you're right, the word of God says it's right. If the word of God says that you are more than conqueror, you, are, you enter places and then you speak as a conqueror. Because the word of God is the authority that tells you to speak that way. If you enter places and you are afraid, you have departed from the word of God. Are, are you what I'm saying? If you are worried, you have departed from the word of God. If you are anxious, you have departed from the word of God. So being humble under the hand of God is to refuse to be anxious. Because you depend and you obey and then you let the authority transform you. Now you receive power. And now you need to function. In functionality, you can add. Let me explain. You can be somebody who is good into doing, let's say, singing, for instance, into the power office of ministry of music. You can have the functionality of singing. You can have the functionality of playing. You can have the functionality of drumming. Or you can be put into the power office of a pastor. You can have the functionality of prophet. You can have the functionality of teacher. Functionality is not who you are. Functionality is what you can add based on the power you have. Does it make sense? Now, for different functions of functionalities to be added onto you, you have to be able to... Be able to agree that the power that God has given unto you gives you authority to receive them. Let me put an example. In the power of the office, when the president of the United States enters that office, it is the office that makes him president. It's not him that makes the office right? It is the office. Because even if he's president, he's not sitting in the office. <laughs> he ain't president. Hallelujah. So the office makes him president. What makes you child of God and bold with power is that the spirit in which you have entered, in whom you have entered, the Lord in whom you have entered, make you powerful. Let me repeat again. The Lord Jesus that you have accepted the Lord God that has entered your heart, in whom you have entered, it is in him you have your being. It is in him that you move. Hallelujah. So because you have entered him, you have now been imbued with the power from high. But you need to function in every place where you are supposed to function. 
with power, you command, and then things change. But now, when it has changed, you need to maintain it. You need to multiply it. You need to be able to function so that uh, you can maintain and multiply whatever God puts in your hands. Now, how do you function? Two principles. The first one, do not depart from the word of God. For the word of God says in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, if thou keep, hallelujah, on thy mouth this word of the law. Amen. That thou shalt prosper in everything you do. Can you, can you read that for me, please? Joshua 1, verse 8. Joshua 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, mm -hmm. so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, listen very carefully. You will see why it is so important. If you want to become a nurse, if you want to become a doctor, if you want to become a teacher, you go and you learn from the books of men. And when you learn, like for instance, my brother, when you wanted to become a truck driver, what do you do? You go and you learn how to drive the truck. Amen. When you want to become what? A plumber? You go, to, if, even if you think that uh, you have the supernatural knowledge, there are some rudiments that you will have to learn. There are some tactics and tips and techniques you will have to learn in order to get your job better. Are you know what I'm saying? So, to put it this way, anything in this world that you learn, you become. If you learn mathematics, you will become mathematics. Now, when somebody comes and gives you a equation, what is 1,000 divided by 355? I don't know what it is, but the person we know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you have learned. So you become it. You are becoming like a calculator. When you learn trade, you become a trader. Listen very carefully. The power of you to become resides in what you do and you see and you look at. If you look into the word of God, You become what the word of God says. For it says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and eat and meditate day and night. So that is only after you have taken the rules, the rudiments, the techniques, the tactics. Let me give you an example. The word of God says that uh, make for yourself friend of mammon. Have you ever read this one? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah, find that for me, please. <laughs> the day I read that, I was like, Jesus. <laughs> I said, what you talking about? <laughs> I had to fast and pray to understand what he's trying to tell me. Because he took me off. He was talking about the... Uh, un, uh, um, the servants, the, the unjust servant, unfaithful servant, the, the wicked servant, who, what happened is that the master have realized that uh, he did not do right. And then he went, he told to the one, if you owe 100, write down 50. To the other one, if you owe 100, write down 40. Do you have it? Put it for me, please. Is what? 
Luke 16, go ahead. Luke 16, verse 9. And I tell you, learn from this. Make friends for yourself for eternity by means of the wealth of unrighteous, unrighteousness. That is, use material resources <laughs> oh, no, yeah, as hey, a Jesus way Christ. to further the work of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let, let, let me put, put that for me in French. If you go up, you sh should see French, Lieu Segon, something like that. Put that for us in French. Do you see it? Okay, go ahead. Uh -huh. Luke 16, verse 9. Uh -huh. Et moi, je vous dis, faites-vous des amis avec les richesses en jeu. Oh, hold on a point right here. Faites-vous des amis avec les richesses Injuste. So when you read that yourself, uh, be, uh, like a child of God, you're like, this one is a mistake of uh, translation. <laughs> but you got to understand what it means. And we're getting there. And then what? Pour qu'il qu vous reçoive dans les tabernacles éternels, quand elles viendront mm -hmm. à vous manquer. Let me explain. Is when the Lord has opened that to me, then I say, ah. Because you see, before, if someone, let's say someone will come, put it back in the English for me. If someone will come and we say, ah, man of God, this is an offering or this is, I want to bless you. If the person is not godly, I don't take it. But don't these, the word of God say that the, he will cause the riches of the wicked to be assembled. And put in your hand. You see, the riches of the wicked can have blood on it. You feel what I'm saying? Because it's wicked, it's not holy. The wicked of the the, 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 the riches of the wicked can have prostitution on it. The riches of the wicked can have witches and wizards and witchcraft on it. Am I right? And yet the word of God says you will gather all this to put in your hand. What does it mean? It means that. Gold and silver does not belong to the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Gold and silver does not belong to the devil. Because of misteaching and erroneous teaching, we have grown up thinking we did not want to have prosperity. So when people were preaching about, oh, you will be prosperous, we are like, eh. Mm -mm. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Even though that the enemy used a wood to make an idol, it does not make the wood evil. You get it? So the Lord Jesus says, when you are on earth and you live on earth, if you don't have financial power, you will not enter places you want to preach for. You go in your room. Lord of power. Lord of riches. I bless you. You chose me. And then you don't even have a bicycle to ride. <laughs> so when you arrive at a place and they say, okay, uh, who is this? This one. No, put it on the <laughs> The Lord Jesus says, you must understand how the world rules and function so you can function correctly in the world. But you are not of the world, but you must function in the world. You say, no me, I have the Holy Ghost. That's true. Oh, no me, I'm a child of God. That's true. And then you arrive at the White House and then you have flip-flop. Wait, that which <laughs> you, you follow what I'm saying? When you talk with your wife or your husband or your spouse, you can talk anyhow. When you talk with somebody, as I said, you can talk to the person. Oh, ça va bien, on dit quoi? Oh, hier là, tu es arrivé. Oh, voilà, va tu es bien. Ok, ok, my friend. Ok, va là demain. Mais when you see the president coming, 
Bien sûr. Oh, bah, oh, 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 bien sûr, bien sûr. Bah, en fait, ce que je voulais dire... Your syllables change. And then you are using specific syllables for specific situations. In a spirit, when you pray, it's the same thing. When you pray in the spirit, you can pray in a certain way of tongues where you start praying. Rio Sibo, Zika, Bantoli, Asebelo, Skibido, Pelelon, Dolo, Bela, Skida, Brenteleos, Kamana, Yalandala. And then you know that you are praying. But there is a way where you start praying. But then you know you have entered warfare. When you go before the king with power and you tell to the king, Oh king, I respect you, honor you, but upon my word, it shall be no rain. Are you know what I'm saying? Who's that? Elijah. He did not only had Holy Ghost on him, but he went with power. You go to war. The enemy has a bazooka. And then you come. And then you come with a... A pistol. <laughs> and you hear over the boom, doom, doom. <laughs> uh, you follow what I'm saying? It's not compatible. So the Lord Jesus says, be wiser. Know how to use the things of this world to rule this world. Because in this world, when you live in this world, when you walk in this world, as much as you want, you will need actual food to put in your belly. My Lord Jesus, he ate actual food. Amen? It's when we miss it that we are so spiritual, so spiritual than Jesus Christ, and now we are broke. But you function normally when you understand why you were on earth. He said, occupy until I. When he needed to pay the taxes, what did he use? No, money, not fish. <laughs> he didn't take the fish to say, uh, he used money. Even though he came out of the mouth of the fish, but yeah, he was money. The money is not the problem. It is the love of money. You see? Because when you go in heaven, you will work on street of... So if you have problems with money, you cannot go in heaven. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you just can't talk. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil is a thief. So how does he steal? Preach false gospel so you will you yourself give your prosperity. For I will that you prosper at every level, even as your souls prospereth. So you prosper in the word of God, the word of God lifts you up in due time. Prosperity is different from materialism. Materialism is you get, get, get for your you, for your you, for your you, for your you, for yourself, for your, to glorify yourself. Prosperity, according to the kingdom of God, is power to increase the kingdom. Are you following what I'm saying? It's power to increase the kingdom and expand the kingdom. So when the Lord Jesus says that thou shalt prosper in all your ways, if thou depart not from the power that is contained in this word, then you will function in every step of the way accurately. Power to operate and to function. 
Last time I was sharing with my brothers and sisters, and I said, they, they, went, they went to, the Lord has given us a grace to start a company, and we do locks that we call intelligent locks. And a sister in Navarre Coast, she said, she went, and when she arrived, they told her that this type of locks is too expensive, that other people do it uh, cheaper. And then I told her, you see, you need to learn the power of transformation. Because the devil will devalue who you are, so you will play in that level. You know what I'm saying? When you know you have gold, and somebody tried to convince you this is ashes, if you believe, then you're dumb. Are you what I'm saying? When you know what you have, you cannot compromise it. You stay on your ground. You cannot compare Ferrari and Toyota. So I told her, listen, you need to have the spirit of God. You need to understand the principle of the word of God because even the word of God tells us how to do business. And I told her what you have to do. When somebody tells you that, oh, you know, your thing is too expensive, da, 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 da. when the person is finished, focus on what you have. Focus on your product. Don't focus on his issues. Mary did it. The Lord Jesus told her, listen, it's not my time. She did not focus on what is not. She focused on what is. She said, just do what you're going to say. You go to somebody trying to make a deal. And remember, you are being empowered to operate and function for the kingdom. So your ruler and director ain't the same as the one of the world. So because my ruler and my director says he wants me to be able to function in this world, then how do I have to do it? First, I need to seek the word. That will give me the stamina that I need. And then I present myself before the world. And when I present myself before the world, I can speak in the language that they speak without being part of them. The Bible says that Daniel, he was a chief magician, but he was not a magician. You get it? He had power to operate and function. He was not compromised. He was among the chief, uh, he was among the magician and the chief magician, but he was not a magician. So the power to operate will cause you to find treasure under the dirt. If you want to find treasure only on the surface, polish, and then clean, clean, and then you come and then you pick it up, you might make a mistake. Because most of the treasure are found deep under the dirt. You want gold? Dig. You want diamond? Dig. When you take out the gold the first time, it does not shine, does it? But the lack of shine does not mean it's not the value of it. So when God has placed in you the power to operate, it's to speak so it be. For decree a thing and it shall be established. Why are you afraid? Why are you doubtful? The Lord give me the grace to sit among them that they call billionaire. When I arrived, the people talk, and then I tell them what to do. And they're wondering, am I a trillionaire? <laughs> I cannot on who they are. Because when the Lord gives you the power to operate, he removes from your eyes the intimidation. You are no longer trembling before powers. You are no longer trembling before authorities. You are no longer trembling before riches. You are 
steady because you know that the Lord has sent you for one thing, the kingdom, to represent the kingdom. So whether in finances, whether in ministry, whether in businesses, if you do not abide by the principle of this word, you will lack functionalities. You will lack functionalities. You will operate here and there, but you will lack functionalities. The second principle of operation and functionalities is to be giver. You see, some teaching have many times talked about so a seed, so a seed, so a seed, so a seed, so a seed. And then they have made it become so, so much so something that I'm talking about the chaff that has entered the church, okay? They has made it become so much so something that the children of the law were frustrated and offended by even when they hear so a seed, they're already, they're already mad. <laughs> Let me remind this. The word of God says, for he is the one who gives seed to the... What does it mean? Who is the sower? We are the sower, but what does the sower do? What do? He plant, he sow, he let go. So the word of God says, he gives seed to the one who lets go. Does it make sense? If you want seed, you need to learn to let go. Because anytime you let go a seed, you have multiplication of harvest. Hallelujah. That principle is important because that principle does not depend on your faith. Oh, you got it wrong. Let me explain again. The Bible says it will be season day and night, rain and sun, winter, summer, and spring, all the day until the end, God has established it. So when the wicked seed, it grows. Because it is not depending on his faith. It's depending upon the establishment of the principle that God has already put in motion. That's why the Muslim, when they give, they receive. Are you what I'm saying? The key for rising, the key for breaking levels is not only prayers. Even the word of God says, there was a man who came who saw a friend and he said, ah, please, will you give me this because I received some people and the Bible said that he told him, go, the Lord be with you. <laughs> the Lord says, this is wrong. So, to be in the kingdom of God is not only about prayer. For it says, show me your faith and I will show you my faith by my. For don't you know that faith without works is? It's not even in coma. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus, when he says, greater works than this you will do, people only thought about miracle and healing. No! It was not only that, because the Lord Jesus was a carpenter too. Are you what I'm saying? So the enemy to steal from our hands has made sure to give us a a a a, a, a come to our go, 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 go. Eh? a false image of what is real. And they came. They distorted the word of God in every ways so that uh, we will not see what actually the word of God says. So they put all kind of uh, false things on it. But remember, it's not because Buddha is called God that God is not God. It's not because the people of Babylon have uh, penetrated the temple that the temple was not built by God. Are you what I'm saying? 
So you have to keep your focus correctly. Power to operate helps you to operate even in the midst of confusion. Everybody is confused and then you are clear. I told you last time. When they say, hey, there is inflation. Hey, everything is becoming expensive. Everything inflates. In my hair is different. In my hair, my pocket inflates. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? You got to hear it differently. Because you see, the house I bought 10 years ago would be the same price for my pay. Um, the house I have and everything I have will remain the same. Why? Because I am under the rule of God. So my salary increase by my expenses decrease because I am of the kingdom. Are you what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. In the time of COVID, they said, hey, because of COVID, everybody stay home. Don't go anywhere. We're going to pay you. Huh? You want me to say no? Bring it. No. L listen. You have to understand the difference between favor and laziness. Favor makes you move only one finger. And the entire territory is yours. It's not laziness. In the spiritual realm, when God gives you the grace of favor, you don't do much and he comes much. In the kingdom of Egypt, <laughs> you toil, you toil. When you finish your back, uh, Jesus, oh, Lord God, hey. <laughs> you walk like a, like a lame. <laughs> and you get home, you beat up. Prayer, you paper. Fasting, you paper. <laughs> you paper, meaning is like a way of speaking in French. In uh, Abraham, we say, oh, tip papa fait ça. It's to say, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> the, the normal way of saying is, tu ne peux pas. But we say in the word, tip papa, tip papa. <laughs> uh, my brother, he came from Africa with the fire of the Holy Ghost. He arrived. I said, Friday he was here praying. Katabada, katabada. I said, Jesus, this is the fire I arrived. Hey, next day, two weeks after, he was here. Katabada, katabada. I say, yeah. We told him, brother, do it, but be careful of uh, immigration. He said, what, 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 what is this? We tell you, we know. <laughs> Three weeks after, kaba da da, kaba da da. I say, hey, the Lord is in here. The Lord. When people come to church, I say, yeah, that's a yeah, that's a fire. One month, they told him, brother, we're gonna pay you so you will sleep. <laughs> so they were paying him salary for him to sleep at home. Literally. So he was galvanized. Kadabada bada, kadabada bada. Second man, we say, you ready to go to war? <laughs> Come here. He arrived to war. After the short bullet on him, he came. Oh Lord, mercy of your grace. <laughs> Let the grace of the Lord, let the mercy of the Lord, hey, Lord God. <laughs> and then he told us, it's uh, immigration. <laughs> Are you understood? <laughs> but it was not to be so. You know what I'm saying? How many of us that the Lord has planted in our hands power to operate and yet we are dysfunctioning? This message is to regalvanize you, to bring you where you are supposed to stand and then to stand where you are supposed to see and to see what you are supposed to get and to get what is supposed to be yours.
Do not give room to the enemy. He can beat you. But the Bible says, even the enemy attacks you seven times, you will rise. You will rise. Somebody say, I will rise. And I am rising. I am rising. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, I am rising. I am rising. I am rising. People of God, it is for you that the kingdom has released the riches. For you, the kingdom of God has released the prosperity. For you, the kingdom of God has received the power, released the power, so you can occupy and spread the kingdom in every part of the world so that the word of God can be heard, can be preached, so that you can sustain the kingdom of God. So you will not be a beggar. You will not be a beggar, but you will lend. You will not be a beggar, but you will be at the head. You will not be a beggar, but you will dominate. You will not be a beggar, but you will be at the head. That is the word of the Lord. It is not the word of mine. For thou shalt be at the head and not at the tail. For in your going, you will be blessed. In your coming in, you will be blessed. In your staying, you will be blessed. It is the word of the Lord. That says he gives you the benefits of your soul so that your soul will not lack none of his benefits. All the contrary seed that the enemy has sown in your spirit and caused you to let go of the things of the prosperity that God has placed in your hand in order to expand the kingdom. Take it back in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive and recover. For the word of God says uh, David went out uh, and he recovered all. He recovered all. He recovered all. He recovered all. Maria, Maria, Maria. Enough is enough of the lies of the enemy that is putting us in a cave thinking that we are alone. No, we are more than conquerors, say the word of God. And because we are more than conquerors, we need to conquer. We need to enlarge. God, enlarge my territory. God, enlarge my territory. Favor was with Joseph. And a Joseph who's the one who has learned from his father. And the one who has learned from his father is the one who has received salvation. Regardless of the intemperies, regardless of the adversities, regardless of the things that came against your ways, and against what God has placed in your hand. Listen, there is a time when the sun will even stay still for you to completely take down the enemy. Hallelujah. There is a time that the sun will not go down. He will stay still to give you light so that you can see the enemy at every corner and take them down. Until the every enemy, the Bible said that Joshua said, you be there. Power to operate. Until I have finished with every one of your position, you'll be there. Give me light, but blind the enemy. For the word of God said that the pillar of fire was between the children of God and the children of Egypt. Fire was given unto him as a light, but blindness was given to the In the spirit of God, with the power of resurrection, the power of transformation, and the power to operate, you see the enemy, but they don't see you because you are a spiritual sniper. You must come down to the place of refusing to eat 
from the crumbs because you are not a Syrophoenician. You are a child of God. And the promises of God are yea and amen. And the word of God says that we are children of the inheritance of Abraham. Abraham did not only see God, he also saw the actual, the physical, I hear what I'm saying, prosperity that God has placed in his hand. Even when the enemy has attempted to take him down, at the end of the day, God came in the dream of that enemy and told him, you are a dead man. But the next morning, Abraham, the riches increase. So every courtroom that they will rise against you will give you money. Every chase that they will get against you will give you prosperity. Every word that they will rise against you, you will condemn. For this is the inheritance of the children of the Lord. Yeah. They're thinking they are rising weapons against you, but they're not realizing that they are discovering the weakness of the weapons. But because until then they haven't seen your weapons. But now you know the weapons. And you know how to counteract. Because when the enemy attacks with his weapons and the weapons do not take you down, you know you're gonna take him down. Are you what I'm saying? Let the Spirit of God that has raised Christ from the dead. Rise from the dead every belief that you had in God that was supposed to get you to the top. Everything, every word, every expectation, every hope that you had in the Lord that you knew was supposed to get you there, let it rise back again. Let the word of God in you rise back again. Let the power of God in you rise back again. Let the spirit of God in you rise back again. Let the fire of God in you rise back again. Dominate. For it is the will of God. To become poor. To let go of his glory. So he can show you the path to glory. So you can grow from glory to glory. So you can be efficient and proficient in spiritual life, in financial life, in material life, in prosperity, in kingdom. So you can be efficient and proficient. For he gives seed. To the sower. For he gives seed. Father, I bless your name. Let the wind of the east that comes and take over and that comes to rackle all the things that were not to be, but that comes also to bring life into the bones. I pray that the east wind of the Spirit of God, even as it has come into the dry bones and gave a sinew and gave flesh and rolls back an army mighty to the Lord. I pray, Lord God, even that same wind that is in the upper room in the day of Pentecost, I pray that same wind to come and take away every idea of the devil that the enemy has planted in the life of your children and, and plant your ideas and, and plant your kingdom. And, and plant, Lord God, your elevation. For it is of you, God, that you say that in the time, in the due time, thou will lift them up. Thou will lift them up. This is the due time. For today is called the day. This is the due time. Lift up your children. Lift up your people. Lift up your chosen. Lift up your called. Lift them up above the mountains. Lift them up above the sea. Let them walk over the seas. Let them walk over the tempest. Let them walk over the storm. For the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.